Hello, we are here for one more lesson of this bootcamp training course. And the topic for today will be the four axis milling. So we, we've been seeing until now uh, three axis milling, uh, which is the most common. And uh, with this concept of the four axis milling, we introduce uh, an additional axis, which can have several configurations. And again, as in other types of uh, milling, uh, what is uh, crucial and very important is the perfect definition of the machine kinematics. This allows you to have a correct uh, post-processed file running in your machine without any problems. So uh, I will use a couple of examples. We have uh, with a standard installation of Sprutcam. So we have a folder called 4D. Uh, the first one, it is uh, an engraving. I will activate the machine. And in this particular example, as you can see, we have um, what I can call a standard machine. <coughs> and we have this additional axis, which rotates uh, under the X uh, axis, the standard X axis. So we have already one program um, already created called uh, 2D contouring. So basically, if we look in the job assignment, we have uh, a file with text that was uh, inserted and imported into SprutCam. And uh, when we uh, calculate the program, basically what was done, it, it was something like this. So the axis moves and we engrave the letters uh, in this cylinder that is defined uh, and this movement is controlled by uh, this uh, axis here. The idea of having the, the correct machine with the, kinematic, with the kinematics uh, perfectly defined allows us to calculate this also correctly. So this is one of the possibilities. Um, another possibility it is uh, what we call uh, rotary milling, which is uh, basically uh, pretty much uh, the same concept of machine. So we have uh, an additional um, axis under uh, X. And we have uh, two uh, milling programs. One it is called rotary milling. The rotary milling basically uh, can have uh, multiple configurations. We can show the program. So if you see, I will try to uh, look a little. OK. We have a program that runs back and forward. So if we simulate it, we should see something like this. OK. We can have uh, a finishing, this type of finishing toolpath that runs like this. Um, this is uh, possible to uh, change for sure. As we can have uh, all the other parameters, you know them already, so it's not very um, different from what we've seen until now. Um, we can have a definition also uh, for uh, a tilt angle or a side angle if you want. Uh, in this particular case, we don't have it. The, um, the angle of the tool is on the normal position and this fourth additional axis is controlled by, ro by the rotation of this core. Uh, but as you can see, this comes back and forward because we have this uh, parameter here, linear. We can do it uh, circular or we can do it spiral. And I will say, Please do it spiral. And uh, uh, a little different toolpath it is created. It takes a couple of seconds to do this calculation. In the end, the result is uh, pretty much the same. But the behavior is totally different because now if we do a simulation instead of back and forth, which is more soft for these, uh, for these parts. We have 
something like this, which is continuously rotating and doing this kind of behavior. Okay. Then we have uh, two decontouring. Two decontouring uh, is uh, a standard two D procedure, uh, which basically uh, finds this uh, rib here and do uh, a standard size milling, <coughs> which can be seen like this. Okay, it's it's it is standard, but as you can see here, but for each of the new ribs makes a, a rotation on this core also. So it is also a nice uh, a nice way to have uh, four axis milling, but uh, grabbing a functionality of 2D. So another one, it is uh, something called uh, screw, okay, a file called screw. Let's try to to see what it is done. So again, the configuration of these four axes is also with this type of of uh, of part. So we have a rotating. Let me hide the part. Okay, we have this kind of part. It is a screw, and we have. Uh, either in roughing and uh, on finishing two strategies. So in roughing we will open these uh, grooves and in finishing we will follow the shape and make the, the milling. So let's try to, to show what is done. A little slower. Okay, first uh, sorry, I was trying to start with roughing and I start. Okay, so roughing, it is opening this, so you see this kind of direction. We can change this, so we, and it will open all the groups. All the parameters are important, but as you know, um, the steps and so on, okay, it's easily understood. Uh, I will concentrate my analysis so I can have a circular or spiral. Spiral it's basically the same as circular but uh, in spiral mode. And the linear uh, it will make something a little different because the direction it's other. So uh, if you remember, let's try to see now what is going on. So let's try to, okay. Uh, do a reset to our model and okay as you can see now the direction is perpendicular to the to the other one and this is one possibility to uh, work with a rotary roughing um, regarding the finishing okay let me run the calculation again we can do a very similar uh, thing uh, take this out. So this finishing program it is following the shape, which probably in this particular type of part it is the best strategy to follow. Uh, let me try to see what it is being done. Okay. Okay, it is opening. So following the shape, but uh, we could do this also uh, considering other possibilities, not spiral, but also linear, and uh, it will do uh, quite different uh, kind of uh, toolpath, which again we can try and simulate. Okay. As you can see, it's totally different from the first one, much more aggressive in this particular case. But it depends on the shape, it depends on the situation. This is to show you different possibilities of what we can do. Uh, screw 2. Another file, 
uh, let me see what it is done here. So um, it's pretty much the same. Uh, rotary wrapping, we've seen already uh, how this works, so it can follow the shape or not. So if we go here, we see that in this case we have spiral, so it's basically the same as before. Uh, in here we have a different kind of uh, toolpath, so this is uh, finishing, we have this rotary machining. Uh, a little different from the previous one. Uh, if we go under the simulation, uh, this, this equipment is again is controlled by uh, the same kind of kinematic machine. So, so reduce a little the speed. So this is uh, a little different, okay, but also a very interesting possibility to make this machining. And uh, most likely we have also the possibility to, uh, instead of doing like this, to open, for example, this linear. And uh, in this particular case we have also a standard inclination of the axis. Uh, we can have, for example, a side angle. Let us try to uh, fix it and to run it to see what happens in this particular case. Probably not the best strategy because uh, with a side angle maybe we have collisions or areas not possible to mill. But okay, totally different. Let's try to simulate this. So it was rotating on that direction. Now it's different. completely different and okay it is moving each time it makes an increment it is moving a little and it will create the shape uh, the last one uh, a little different part not screw it's uh, basically a mix of a round part with a square part uh, the kinematics is the same, but it's a little different because uh, we can apply also the concept of what we call the standard uh, milling tool, tool paths. In this particular case, the roughing plan. Um, this is a part where, uh, if we go to job assignment or to see the rough, we see that. Uh, uh, let me hide the part. Okay, we have this kind of initial block, so uh, having the kinematics defined, it will uh, create a roughing plan strategy going all uh, the faces uh, around. So um, the idea is quite interesting, okay, because it will simplify us a lot of work. So when I do the calculation, I have this kind of, of behavior, so it will clean one face and then it will move up and it will rotate, so which is uh, quite nice. And uh, when we apply uh, the other type of toolpaths, we don't have in this one uh, with the exception of this rotary machining, which is similar to the one we've seen because it is opening this circular uh, spiral groove. All the other stuff, it is uh, standard. So we have roughing plans, roughing water lines, whole machining. Uh, all of this stuff, it is uh, defined in uh, standard position and it is uh, created uh, according to what the system analyzes in the part. Uh, so let's try to simulate uh, th this uh, roughing water line. So I will speed up a little. As you can see, it rotates when it finishes one face. So roughing water line two. So it will open this pocket again, and it will rotate on the opposite direction, probably to create the other one. Okay, here it is. And then we have this whole machining that identifies, or if not, we will do 
uh, all the necessary uh, center of, of holes to create all the holes as you can see one face then rounds rotate sorry and will create the other one so very uh, easy to create this four axis uh, strategy uh, the trick here or the important uh, concept uh, in this this type of, of machining it is to have a correct definition of the kinematics uh, on the machine so we have in this particular case a machine defined uh, for simplicity you can grab a machine for example if if this is the type of four axis you have you can have this type of machine and change uh, only what is important because all the kinematics it is done maybe you only want to uh, change uh, some feed rate some some easy uh, stuff not without the need of going deep into this and uh, very easily you you are able to start creating four axis uh, toolpaths okay but uh, study a little about these concepts try with your own examples to see what is possible what you need also and uh, in case of need or in case you have any questions about these topics let us know uh, we are we are here and for sure we can give you some support about uh, all of your questions